Hey YouTube, welcome to TCTN. Let me show it the right way. Y'all know what time it is. I have a Zoom call in, oh goodness, about 40 minutes. And so I said, let me just do my face real quick. And it's like, I just wanted to sit and talk to y'all. I turned, I don't have anything on my face, as you can tell. <laughs> I turned this around because it was facing the other way. If you want me to go through what that what that is, let me know. And the reason I have things hanging from here is my previous partner, he had uh, like a stuffed animal, a small one, hanging from his ceiling light so that he wouldn't hit his head on the light. And I'm like, that's a great idea because this is low. I It just like grazes me like right here <laughs> and not hard enough to hurt because it kind of just grazes my hair. And so I said, that's a good idea. So that's why I hung stuff from there. So even if I hit it, it just moves. And this is just, I can't see this one. This is just straps, how this one is a strap to this one. And so that's what that is there. And if you want to see what all of that stuff is over there, let me know when I'll do just a random video showing you what that stuff is. So for right now, we're going to put on the Dr. Dennis Gross Ferolic Plus Retinol Eye Cream. This is a technique that I saw Wayne Goss do that he talked about how to prevent your concealer from creasing. But I remember him saying prior to that, years ago that if you have wrinkles whatever you put on it is going to crease and I found that to be very true however this technique does help my concealer to stop creasing as much and also watching him and Robert Walsh Robert Welsh I always say Walsh is Welsh he puts a dot of concealer here a dot here two dots here actually two dots and a dot here so that way because there's not a lot of product under here there's nothing there to actually crease and so that's why I do my concealer the way I do so Wayne was saying put on put on eye cream if even if you already have on eye cream from your skincare you put on that morning for those of those who do put on skincare in the morning which I do and at night he said put on additional eye cream because that gives you more hydration and then he said put an eye primer on there and so I've been putting and I don't know if you've noticed me doing this in videos or not um I really don't remember <laughs> putting on eye primer on top of the eye cream excuse me I feel like I need to hiccup I had an Activia uh, with some strawberries in it and I actually cut up fresh fresh strawberries and put in my Activity Activia. I cannot speak today. Has it been that long since I did a video that I can't talk? And so then you take the concealer. You either do like two dots, but sometimes I just go like that. Usually I just go like that. <laughs> and then a dot over here. <laughs> then you just pat that out. Keeping it towards the inner area. Because the goal is like... I'm going to try and see if I can explain this the right way. Because there's a line here, this area is sunken in. And because it's sunken in, that's what makes it look darker. Some people do have hereditary darkness where it's just their entire under eye is dark. And if you look at my face, when I smile, there is a hollowness right here. And if you also look from the side of my face, it looks like it starts small and then it just kind of comes this way. You see what I mean? And so... The purpose of just putting it on the inner corner and here is to kind of eliminate that hollow area right here. And so lightening that up versus lightening this entire area. And so I don't know if you can see a difference or not already. I should have just did one eye and my brush is backwards and not the other eye to see if I even noticed a difference. And I keep meaning to do a video. <laughs> just doing one eye to see if I see a difference and there's hardly any product on the brush I did not put a lot on as you saw so whatever residual is on the brush I will lightly dab underneath of my eye area and if I'm feeling like I want some more coverage which I think it looks okay this way and I do think it evened out my face but I'm going to just put a little bit more right here and here this is the NARS creamy concealer which is thicker and it feels a little drier 
then the Sephora Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer, which is actually my go-to. But I remembered back in the day, I really loved the NARS one. And their colors are comparable. So in the Sephora number 13, which is cream caramel, that's the same color as the NARS Creamy Concealer in Medium Dark 2, which is caramel. And for the Sephora Bright Future Gel Serum 11.5 Butterscotch, I recently ordered a mini of the NARS um, Praline because it looks like it would be the same color, so I want to see if it is or not. But I've been really liking using the NARS again. And I want to take just a little bit. I think this side might be deeper. You see how it's, it goes in? Like it's the socket right here. So I'm going to just take a little bit more and just put right there just to see if that makes a difference. The reason I switched to the Sephora one was because it's either $13 or $14 and you get 0.13 ounces, which is like half the cost of a full size of the NARS. And I like that the NARS has the minis. The minis are like 13 bucks. And because as you see, I only use like a tiny bit, it will last me. I don't do my makeup every day now that I'm retired. And so I was finding that my primers and concealers were expiring. And so I was excited to see the minis and the NARS. And after you put on your eye cream, the eye primer, and your concealer, then you lightly, very lightly set with powder, but I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm going to put on foundation. As usual, I did put down um, the Milk Hydro Grip Primer, one pump, two pumps of the Estee Lauder 4 in 2, and two drops of the Bashia Tsubaki Beauty Oil. So that's what this is. And then I, and I layer it. So then I just take this brush and mix it and then I start to dot it around my face. Well, stipple it. <laughs> Foundation in my hair. One thing I noticed is sometimes I think I have lint in my hair, but it's actually my gray hair. And so when I get powder in my hair, I'm like, oh, they'll just think. <laughs> they'll just think that's my gray hair. So I don't make too big of a deal of it, but I do make sure I do this around the edges because you can see maybe or maybe not that there is some gaps. And I may turn the brush this way and lightly go along my hairline. <laughs> but I need to move quick because this stuff dries quick. Even the beauty oil helps it not dry down so fast, but I still don't want to take a lot of time because this will dry. And I still need some for over here and it's almost gone and I need some for over here. And give me more. <laughs> and so that is it. So that takes, well, not that takes, but I used the whole thing. And as you saw, I did start from the center of my face, which is where most of it goes. And then I kind of just blend it around and bring it down, whatever's left on a brush, which is nothing. Um, <laughs> so it's really just making sure it's all blended. I, I find that I don't get streaks I do like the stippling effect because it mimics the texture of my skin. Like my skin is not completely smooth, it's not completely porcelain. And so when I stipple, to me that looks skin-like versus just a, a blank canvas of nothingness. And whatever is left on a brush, which is nothing, or whatever is left from blending, I will just dot under here. And that's more so just to blend the concealer in with excuse me, with the foundation. I know some people say they just use concealer under their eyes and spot conceal, spot conceal and powder. For me, that doesn't work <laughs> because of, of the different colors of my face. Even now with the concealer on and the foundation on, you can still see my skin. And that's what I like foundation for me to do. I like it to still look like me, just a little more even. You can still see, you know, my freckles. You can still see this thing that I picked up here. I'm a picker. You can still see, and I don't like it, the, in, the indentation for my glasses. But what I was going to say is you can still see the freckles on my nose. 
and the freckles on my face. And so I like that you can still see my skin under the foundation. It just looks a little more polished. And even though I'm looking now to me, it still looks a little discolored under here. I still think it looks a lot better than it did before. And I don't mind it still being a little hollow under here because people who know me and those of you who have watched my previous videos when I had nothing on my face and even when I started this video with nothing on my face except skincare, you know what my skin looks like. So if I ever have completely flawless skin, it's like, okay, you don't look right. And I did a face before and a couple people were like, your skin looks weird today. <laughs> Cause I had on like so much makeup, it didn't look natural. And so I like this natural look and I'm not bashing anyone who wants the complete flawless and, and all of that. It's just not me. People know what I look like. And if I'm going somewhere around new people, eventually they're going to see what I look like. <laughs> and so I, I don't want to meet someone not looking like myself because eventually they're going to see me. And so I'm going in with translucent powder and I usually take the brush that I use for foundation and I usually press that in under my eyes and down my laugh lines and my t-zone area gets oily not as oily now because it's winter time but I do bring that down here I do acknowledge that even though it's a translucent powder I forgot to put my blush on it does wash me out a little bit and so then I will go in with even though it says translucent it's, it really does have some color to it the Fenty powders and I put that on. I do usually take the translucent all over my face because the setting powders I use are, for, are Fenty's and those powders stick. This has nothing on it. If I have any residual moisture on my face, excuse me for smacking like that, from the concealer or the foundation, that powder will adhere to that spot and then it's very hard close to impossible to blend that out and so I do lightly powder my entire face starting with the under eye again there's nothing at all on this brush I think I'm going to call this video my foundation and concealer technique because <laughs> that's what it's turning out to be I was going to do an eye look too and I may or may not I have about 25 minutes till my zoom so I don't know so we'll see I may do that video after the zoom since I'll already have my base face on I forgot um, my blush, which is a cream blush. So either put it on now or put it on later, or I'm not gonna put it on at all. All right, this is the Fenty Powder and Honey, and I knocked some into the lid. This the powder is weird because the honey, when I lightly tip it, a lot comes out. But with the nutmeg, when I lightly, lightly tip it, hardly any comes out. And I'm trying to remember if I made the holes bigger for this one, for honey, or not. I lightly dot it because I used to just go like this and it would be like poof, like it would just be everywhere. And so since I already had a light dusting of translucent powder, it, this does really blend out nicely. This is more so for the interior of my face, even though you see me lightly dusting it everywhere, because I go in with nutmeg for the exterior of my face. And so you see how that just gave me just a little bit of color. Looks like me again. So even though powders say they're translucent, I don't know if it's because it's going over foundation or over concealer, it, it, to me it always gives color. So this is honey, which is a color, and it says translucent. No, it does not. Mini Instant Retouch Setting Powder, okay. This one that's in here is the Lancome Long Time No Shine Loose Setting Mattifying Translucent Powder. But as you saw, it just, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Washed out my face. This to me looks like my skin. This to me looks like 
what my face looked like before I put on <laughs> the translucent setting powder. I don't know what that was. I was going to do something. I don't know. So we're going to take a little bit of nutmeg using the same powder brush. And I always start in the hollows of my cheeks. And then I come down my jawline. And then I come across to try to cover up this from here to here, which is weird. I did start using the guasa to see if I can get rid of some of this. Because as I was looking at it, there is a pocket. There's like a pocket right here, and then there's this. And as you see, it's only right here. It's, it's not like a double chin. Like when I turn this way, you can see how my chin goes in. And when I turn this way, it's just completely sagging. So there's like a pocket. And I really was looking at it the other day and looking down in this mirror, there's like a space right here. And then it's this pocket. And so like, look at this, this is my chin and it comes to here. And this just also comes to the same spot. So I really do think there's um, fluid buildup, which the guasa is supposed to help. I'm putting some more um, nutmeg in the lid. The guasa is supposed to help drain. And for my forehead area, I start here in the corners. Because even though I have a wide forehead, I don't think it's that bad. And so I don't want to shorten my forehead too much. So that's why I start in the corners. And then I basically do this just to blend it out. I only do this just out of habit because I'm okay with the space between here and here. So this is just out of habit from like 10 years ago due to the, the, the C3 or the EC thing where it's like, okay, do like the E shape. The E3, that's what it was. So one side it looks like you're doing an E and the other side looks like you're doing a three. So me doing this here is just out of habit and also for continuity of color since this all is the perimeter of my face and you can see where the hollows of my cheeks are without me making faces because there's a divot right here and there's a divot over here so that's how i know and also if, if you don't have a distinguishable jawline and even when i smile you can see like where that line is <laughs> if you don't have that is usually where the top of your ear is and just come straight down the top of your ear and well not straight down but straight over and so that's where your jawline is or you can just feel for where your bone is and be like oh, okay it goes right there feel for your bone and that's where it is so that's how you're going to find your jawline if you have a fuller face than i do which i do think i do have like a full face anyway what are we going to do now i think we're going to end this video here and I'm going to do my brows and do a look and do that in the next video. And I thank you guys for watching. Let me know what your techniques are. Oh, I'm going to spray my face for no particular reason. And I have this and I opened it and it expires in November. <laughs> the Milk Hydro Grip <laughs> Setting Spray. I like that it has a fine mist. Because I don't want it on my lids, I always then take my fingers and wipe it off of my lid. Because when I do an eye look, then I put on eye primer. Whatever brush I use for powder, I will lightly just tap it in. Because I can feel the moisture from it on my face. Even though that setting powder, setting spray, does dry down pretty quickly. And so that is it for this video. You guys will see me in the next one. What was I saying? <laughs> Let me know what your <laughs> concealer technique is, your foundation technique. And let me know if you do try this one. Eye cream first. Eye primer. Your concealer. One or two dots here or dot, he dot here. Blend that out. Lightly set it with powder. If you have tried that technique, let me know if it works for you. And I'm going to get all up in your grill. And so I'm happy with that. This is my Zoom. <laughs> I'm so silly. I'm going to Zoom you in. <laughs> and so I'm happy with that. Like I don't have any creasing. Granted, I just put, put this on. But this is what my skin is looking like. It looks like me. You can still see, you know, my imperfections, which make, makes me perfect. 
and you also can see that I'm a little more evened out than when I started. And this to me is a natural look for me. So let me know what you think and what type of foundation look do you go for? Do you want the full flawless beat look or do you go for a more natural look? Either way is fine. Whatever you like. So you'll see me in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.